lesson. Let me give you some onion glass health tips to start the day right. First, sit properly. Make sure your back is rested. Second, change position regularly. Third, keep dim lighting on. Fourth, stretch. Make sure you change position by walking around and do some gentle stretches. And the last one is, do not watch television or monitors in bed. This often leads to neck and back ache. There you have it. Now, I know we are ready to begin. Hello everyone. It's me, Teacher Carlo. Your body to another automotive learning adventure. Now, fasten your seat belts and get ready to power your mind. In our previous lesson, you learn what are the different components of a starting system, its fault and remedies, and its, and its starting system circuit. Now, we will be talking about the main component of the starting system, which is the starter motor and its different functions. Before we go with the topic, let me share you a short video clip on how the starter motor cranks the engine. So, watch carefully the video and tell me about what you have observed. Are you ready class? Hey! <laughs> what have you noticed with the smaller gear? Alright! The smaller gear engages and cranks the bigger gear. What else? Yes! After cranking the bigger gear, it will be automatically disengages the smaller gear. These are some of the mechanical work of the starter motor. So, let us now study the different parts of the starter motor assembly. Oh. oh! The starter motor is a device used to rotate an internal combustion engine so as it to initiate the engine's operation on its own power. The starter motor has pinion which meshes with the teeth on the flywheel of the engine and turns the crankshaft. The power of the motor can be drawn from the battery. A simplified circuit of power supply is shown here. The power from the battery is supplied to a solenoid to turn the power on and off. The solenoid is an electromagnet which requires small current to get energized. As the ignition switch is turned on, the solenoid gets energized. A moving core known as a plunger slides along the coil with, which connects two copper terminals of a contact contractor switch. This completes the circuit from the battery to the motor and causes the, the motor to spin. 
when the solenoid is de-energized, the core returns back and disconnects the motor from the battery. The solenoid has another crucial function. It helps to slide the pinion and engage it with the flywheel before the motor starts to spin. As the pinion slides towards the flywheel, it slightly rotates on its axis as shown here. This rotation is achieved by using helical spline. This rotation helps meshing the pinion with the flywheel more conveniently. As the engine is started, the pinion needs to be disengaged from the flywheel to prevent backdrive of the motor which might damage it due to the excessive speed. This is done by releasing the ignition switch which de-energizes the solenoid and the pinion returns back. But if the operator fails to release the ignition switch as soon as the engine started, the flywheel will drive the pinion so fast and damage the motor. To prevent this, an overrunning clutch is used. The, the one-way clutch has a set of rollers installed between the outer and inner races. When the outer races is rotated, the rollers get trapped and transfer power to the pinion. As soon as the engine is started and drives the pinion at high speed, the rollers get released and power transfer is stopped. The armature is an electromagnet mounted on the drive shaft and bearings for support. It is a laminated soft iron core which is wrapped with numerous conductors, loops, or windings. The combinator bar also is a section of the shaft at the rear of the housing on which the brushes are run to conduct electricity. The combinator is made up of two plates attached to the axle of the armature. These plates provide the two connections for the coil of the magnet. Oh. The carbon brushes run on a section of the commutator at the rear of the housing, making contact with the contacts of the commutators and conducting electricity. The lever fork is connected to the plunger, so when the plunger is pushed forwards, so is the lever fork. This process then activates the pinion. The housing holds the starter fields in the housing with screws. This can consist of two to four field, co field coils connected in series, energized by the battery. This converts the coils into an electromagnet which then turns the armature. When the armature coils are powered, a magnetic field is created around the armature. Let's find out if you learned something in our today's lesson. Let's have a short game. But before that, I want you to have your pen and paper. I will flash a photo behind me and list their names if you really listened. Are you ready? <clears throat> the first photo will be one, two, three, four, five. Raise your ball pants, and the correct answer is. Right, it's the pinion gear. The second photo will be Tak on the five. All ball pens will raise up. One, two, three, four, 
and five. What is the correct answer? Right, it's the armature. The third part of the starter motor will be Guess what? At the count of five, all ball pens shall be raised up. Okay? One, two, three, four, and five. What is the correct answer? Okay, you are correct. The answer is solenoid switch. The fourth one <coughs> is ding. at the count of five, ball pens raise up. Okay, one, two, three. Four and five. What's the correct answer? You're right. It's the overrunning clutch. So, this is the last one that I will post. Are you ready? I'll take out the five. All ball pens. Up. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. So what's what's the name of the part? Right, it's the plunger. So clap ourselves. Repair, replace, and assemble starter motor components and parts this will be discussed in our next video lesson to sum it up there are different parts of the starter motor needed for it to function well first is the pinion gear overrunning clutch armature commutator bars carbon brush and holder starter solenoid switch plunger, drive, lever, fork, and so many more. Maybe you are wondering, why is there a need to study and understand the different parts and function of a starter motor? Hmm, what do you think? Understanding the different parts and function of starter motor is a key to understand how the starter motor works and as a mechanic you need to understand what part of a starter motor should be maintained when it troubles okay so that ends our learning adventure this is carlo and saying always remember basta auto guapo see you next time